Not too long ago, I mentioned that I wasn't going to do any more weapon generator stuff until a new one came out, but uh, fortunately for us, a man on Discord by the name of Cultured Shrimp sent me another generator within a couple days of me uploading the last video that is really cool. I've messed around with this a little bit, and um, it was made with Python, by the way. It's not done through Dashnet or any of the other uh, similar programs, but um, this one was made from the ground up, uploaded to GitHub, and uh, it's way better than most of the other stuff that's out right now. So I should probably go through uh, what the generator actually does uh, because this one does function significantly differently than the rest which is just kind of like a uh, click and go type of deal this one actually has some settings uh, like the power level which you can adjust uh, in my knowledge or I guess to my knowledge this is only how many stats generate at a time this has no bearing on like what kind of stats actually are generated um, and then obviously class and slot are pretty obvious but it's kind of cool that you can generate specifically so for instance if I do an OP scout melee and we generate um, we get a pretty decent like sense of what this can do like uh, on hit enemy moves 20% slower for three seconds 10% more damage from backstabs and can see the HP of enemies but then it marks you for death and it has a 20% damage penalty is this OP I mean, I guess we'll determine that. I will do a tier list here in a bit, but um, I don't know. It, it really is just like, I guess, adjusting how many positives or negatives generate is what the power level does. So I think it's at least kind of cool that they added some level of custom ability. These generators also include a picture, uh, so you can kind of see... If, like, for instance, some things that aren't exactly um, mentioned in the stats, like whether a pyro secondary is a shotgun or a flare gun, uh, that would come up in here, and that's what we'll be able to see with the pictures. That's kind of cool. By the way, if anyone's wondering what the get image button does, nothing. It literally just generates, like, a blank new tab. I guess it's this generator is still in development, so I won't be too hard on it, but um, it's, it's kind of funny that it just opens up a new window. Also, in the spirit of using community-made stuff for these uh, tier list videos specifically, I wanted to look at a tier list which was made specifically for these videos by uh, Alexa Gray... Wait, Alexa Gary EC on Twitter. Um, I guess that's how they uh, they denote who made these on Tier Maker, but um, this one was made specifically for my videos because it is called a TF2 Weapon Generator tier list. Um, the original tiers were like basically the same as what I used in my original video with like triple S and G minus or stuff. So um, it's cool that people are uh, making stuff specifically for this. I did change the tiers around because I've uh, adjusted that a little bit since then. But anyway, uh, what I'm going to do this time around with the tier list, I'm not going to do it exactly how I've done it before uh, because there are different power levels. So I'm going to see how closely we can match like each of these to like their specific tiers. So I'll generate four of each I think yeah that that equals 20 we'll just have one extra then that doesn't exist and uh, we'll see hopefully we get like four things in each tier and uh, if that actually works then that means the power level thing is spot on otherwise I mean I mean what are you gonna do all right we'll start with normal we'll do four of these and see what it comes up with so the first one is a medigun uber charge grants the ability to fly I don't know like what exactly flying is going to be determined as here, whether or not that's like no clip, because like, that, that's what flying is with the RTD stuff. Um, whether flying is just you don't have any gravity. There's a number of things that this could do based on what we're uh, translating the word fly to mean here, but um, it's kind of cool, actually. And then the actual stats are that you heal uh, three more HP per second, I'm guessing just on where, I guess that's like health regen, and uh, increased air strafing control, which is oddly appropriate, and then it's 10% less healing on the actual medigun. Obviously, a large part of the medigun actually is being able to um, uber yourself and become either invulnerable or having crits. However, I think the ability to fly is pretty powerful. I'm not going to kind of like skip over how many ridiculous strategies that would uh, open up, especially like if you're a sniper or if you uber a sniper as the medic and you basically just like ascend yourself up to the skybox. Um, that would be a little bit crazy. The only thing about this is that it doesn't have any kind of increased like uber building capability, so you're it's still going to be as slow as the uh, the stock uber, which I'm not sure how good that would necessarily be, but. I feel like this would honestly add so many ridiculous strategies that 
it would be a little bit of a pain to play against. So I'm going to put this, I think the first one's going to go in the balance, but it's unfun tier. It would be really fun for the person using it, don't get me wrong, but uh, number one, it would kind of be a throw pick if you don't actually have like really good teamwork already established, and it would allow for so many like, um, I, I call it low interaction gameplay, it's the same deal as basically what Farah does in Overwatch, where if you Uber a soldier, you would just be glued to the skybox, and because TF2 has a lot more close range stuff and uh, not a ton of far range stuff, basically, with this, you'd have to counter it with Sniper or you're just screwed. So it, it would kind of suck to play against with the enemy team, but I feel like in terms of practical use, it wouldn't be like too broken or too weak. A new secondary for the soldier, which is a banner that gives a buff that increases the attack rate of nearby teammates. That's pretty interesting. Um, the stats are that you can see the HP of enemies. You have increased air strafing control and plus 25 max HP, uh, but then the banner deploys 40% slower and, um, uh, <laughs> bleeds up to 3 HP per second after not receiving healing for a while. That's kind of brutal. This would actually be really good with the, um, I guess like a pocket medic included with you because you, number one, would get more overheal from the extra max HP and the main downside would be negated. Um, the 40% slower deploy rate would be kind of annoying, but um, considering that you kind of have to fall back to pop a banner anyway, I don't think it would be too crazy. I am honestly not too enthused about this one because a buff that increases the attack rate of uh, nearby teammates, like, it's okay. It's... I guess this is like a side grade to the buff banner, although I'd probably still rather have like increased damage on singular hits because, I mean, it's like just less ammo that you're using and mini crits gives you fall off immunity. So this is pretty much just a worse buff banner, but it does give you extra max HP, which I guess is something. The other two upsides, I'm not really think do a whole lot. I'm gonna put this in pretty weak or too gimmicky. Honestly, like... Because it has the same, like, I guess, banner charge rate as the buff banner, I don't really know when people would want to use this over the buff banner, just because, again, if you're using a banner, like, chances are you're going to be using it for the um, the banner anyway, and the, uh, the passive stats that this has basically means that you have to have a pocket medic or else you're just going to be, like, hemorrhaging for most of your life, so... Yeah, I don't know. I, I probably wouldn't want to use this over the buff banner ever. A new secondary for the Pyro, which is a throwable AoE, which means that covered enemies cannot attack for two seconds. Oh my god. Uh, it's 30% increased charge time compared to presumably the Gas Passer, although I don't know... I don't know, like, what the standard charge time in TF2 actually is, and, um, I don't know what 50% faster usage time means either. Does that just mean the throwing animation is, like, half or double speed, or what is... What does that actually mean? And then it has a 40% slower projectile speed and on miss 15% slower firing rate for two seconds or for four seconds, sorry. So this is a very interesting one. I think something that uh, disables counterattacks, even if it is only for like two seconds, is a very interesting design concept. It would suck to play against, don't get me wrong, but um, in terms of like something to play around with, I think you could make this at least usable and uh, probably I mean Pyre already has the flog I guess it wouldn't be any like more or less annoying to play against than that the stats that it has of like increased charge rate is like kind of nice but basically half projectile speed means that this is going to be pretty easy to dodge I don't know what the area of effect would be again I guess this is just a side grade to the gas passer so okay um, what bothers me though is that enemies can't attack back for only two seconds that's barely enough time to pull out your flamethrower and, like, kill them, or at least kill one person even, so, um, and they're still able to, like, run away, so I'm guessing it just does the stun animation, or, like, the, um, the thing that happens when you get hit by a ghost. I don't know, I, I, I think this would, like, there would be enough synergies that you could run with this, um, and because it charges faster, you'd be able to get this fairly often, but it would just be really annoying to play against. So this goes in the balance, but it's on fun tier. Uh, I'm only, like, separating these two for, like, denotation purposes, I think. If it's balanced, it's balanced. Like, I'm not going to discredit it just because it would, like, suck to play against, but I, I feel like it's important to note that um, something would be annoying versus, like, an actually good weapon. A new secondary for the Demo Man, which is basically, like, max ammo reserve, but you 
bleed if you're not getting healed. In terms of like a pocket demo man weapon, this is a direct upgrade, but if you're not being pocketed, then it's a direct, well, no, it's not a direct downgrade. I'll be honest with you, I don't think having extra max ammo would be particularly interesting. Um, it's not like there are any weapons that are like really struggling for ammo in the first place that you'd be able to like boost just by, uh, by having this equipped. Most of the grenade launchers, if you're like fairly resourceful about ammo pack collection and um, actually getting a kill every once in a while and not just spamming, then um, you would be in pretty good shape. Oh, actually, yeah, this, if, if you're defending and you're like near a dispenser too, this would also allow you to spam more efficiently. I, I think this is a pretty good weapon. It's not super exciting, but it does what it needs to do. I'll throw this puppy in balance. I, I think, again, it's just better for defenders, but worse for solo, which is, it, that's a good side grade option. All right, so I generated four on normal. We'll switch it up to toy, which is like a really weird way of saying that, but okay. A new primary for the soldier, which is on hit teammate, grant 30% faster fire rate to both for four seconds. Oh wow, that's interesting. Uh, but it does have a 20% damage penalty. So on hit teammate grant 30% faster firing rate to both. Uh, is that both you and your teammate? I'm guessing that's what this is interpreted as. I know the guy who made this is Russian, so I'm not going to be like too critical on grammar errors, but it, it, you do have to do a little bit of interpreting with uh, the way that some of these stats are worded. I think this would be a really good support option for soldier. Uh, you would almost be able to run like a full support soldier option if you ran like the, uh, the whip, this rocket launcher, and... Um, I think, like, yeah, one of the banners would be appropriate, but I also think that, like, 20% damage penalty is a pretty appropriate downside for this type of weapon. Um, again, it's, like, it's more of a uh, support-oriented option anyway, so not having the damage yourself, I think, is, like, um, pretty good. I do think that this would allow for a lot of synergies, though, and, um, if you're kind of running this as, like, a, uh, pocket soldier or something, if you're running this with, like, a scout, if you had, like, your two scouts and a demo man, for instance, if you were playing six as kind of group up, up, you uh, you hit him with this thing, then they'd be able to uh, have a lot better attack speed. And um, I don't know. There's a lot of potential support options that boosting attack speed would give. And um, I think that because of that, this is automatically a good weapon, even if it doesn't provide any direct buffs to yourself. I'll throw this in balanced. I think um, again, like it does shift your role as a soldier to more of a support oriented class. But um, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that this kind of has some pretty good, uh, well considered stats for the type of role that. You You'd have to play. A new primary for sniper, which is a bow and arrows. Uh, on hit, loading the next shot will be 50% faster. Okay. Increased chance of random critical hit. Okay. I don't think bow and arrows actually have random crit capabilities, so this kind of does nothing. Um, and then the downsides are 25% or 25 less HP. Projectile deals 100% critical hit damage when reflected. On miss makes you unable to switch weapons for three seconds. And then that's, that's it. I like this weapon because it gives us like a really big pool of like new stats that we can kind of see have been added to this generator. So um, I don't think any of these make the weapon particularly good, but it does again, give us just like some cool stuff to kind of take a look at and say, oh wow, it's cool that they added this to the generator. <laughs> I feel like it would be a pretty interesting option for, I guess, spam, because again, the, the increased random crit chance doesn't do anything, but like, if you're able to hit someone, then you basically just have like 50% faster firing speed, and um, it doesn't give you 50% faster charge speed though, which I guess is a problem, so this would, yeah, this would be pretty gimmicky because of that. So, in the pretty weak or two gimmicky tier, you go. A heavy backpack? Okay, I guess heavy backpacks are a thing now. Uh, overheal can give you 15% more max HP and then 10% running speed when feet, wait, plus 10% running speed when feet are touching the ground for more than 10 seconds? So I guess, like, if you haven't jumped in 10 seconds, or, like, fallen off of a ledge or something, then it just gives you 10% movement speed. Okay, that's kind of interesting. And then you get 50% less jump height. I think in terms of, like, a pocket medic option, this is a really selfish choice because it allows you to have, uh, basically 15% more max HP. So is that just 15% 
total overheal like added or like multiplied onto the 50% you already get. Either way, more overheal is good. This would allow you to break the 500 mark anyway, meaning that you're immune to uh, snipers who are charging their weapon. I'm not entirely sure how much the 10% running speed would do. It does help you get to the front line slightly faster, I suppose, but um, it does mean that you just really can't jump as a heavy, which, I mean, do you really need to do that anyway? Actually, I guess if you're like rounding a corner and you're like revving midair, then yeah, that would probably be something you'd have to consider. And with 50% less jump height, that means that your revving mobility is pretty reduced. Um, overall, though, I think this does allow for um, decent options, even if you don't have like a sandwich to heal your medic with or anything. I'll put this in balance. It's definitely not the best weapon I've ever seen, but I think in terms in terms of like things that could be added to Team Fortress 2, this would fit in pretty well. A new soldier banner, which provides a group buff that slowly heals nearby teammates. Okay, that, that's pretty interesting. Uh, it has increased air strafing control and 30% max ammo on all weapons as the positive and as the negative, you bleed up to 3 HP per second and it has a 40% slower deploy rate, which ironically is exactly the same as what the other one had. So here's my problem with this one, right? Ideally, this would be a um, because the group buff that slowly heals nearby teammates, I'm, I'm kind of thinking just like a permanently active, um, what is that called? The, uh, amputator taunt. Basically, you just can activate this banner and for eight seconds you have the amputator taunt active, uh, just kind of near you. The problem with that is that in order to not bleed to death, you kind of have to have a source of healing already. Now, you could use this with the black box and that would cancel everything out, which I think would actually be a pretty good use with this, uh, but if you're not using this with a black box and you wanted to use stock then uh, the purpose of this which is to kind of be a pseudo medic to your team doesn't really work because you have to have a medic to you yourself be able to use this um, I think in terms of like usability though this is pretty balanced uh, if we're just interpreting this as a um, eight second amputator taunt that you can activate whenever you want then I think that's like a pretty good banner uh, maybe not as good as the conch but um, it also gives you extra ammo ammo and increase I don't know what increased air strafing control would actually do um, I kind of need like a number to know how good that actually is just telling me that it's increased doesn't really give me much information there I'll put this I'll put it in balance. I, I was considering pretty weak or too gimmicky, but again, I can see people wanting to actually use this. It's just kind of like if your team doesn't have any options and um, you yourself wanted to like kind of be a medic, but you also just hate playing medic, then there you go. Throw on the black box and uh, just have a side grade of the conch pretty much. All right, so that was the toy power level. Let's go to trash now. We'll just we'll just kind of go up and then we'll do the, uh, the powerful ones at the end. A new primary for the heavy, which has bullet penetration and increased walking speed while revved okay that's pretty good and then the downsides of the enemies can see your HP 30% less ammo on hit minus 10% damage if the hit wasn't a headshot so basically just minus 10% damage on miss minus 15 or 15 HP oh my god and then on miss 15% slower firing rate for the next four seconds so I don't know because on miss, when you're a heavy, right, like each minigun shot fires four bullets, is it just, is it calculating on miss if uh, all of your bullets miss or if only one of them misses? Because per shot, if one out of the four bullets hit and the other three miss, then that's three misses technically, which is minus 45 HP per shot on a minigun. Um, otherwise... I mean, if it's only like, if you can only get the maximum of like one missed stack, I guess, on an actual like fire per ammo consume. It's kind of hard to explain how to actually talk about this, but basically if you're using one ammo and that can only result in triggering the on miss effect one time, I don't think this would be too bad. Um, it would help you build Uber with medic faster and uh, bullet penetration's actually kind of nice, even if it does have like 10% less damage um i think the upsides on this are solid enough to where the um on miss options 
Mm, I don't know, though, because it does give you kind of harsh penalties. I'll put this in pretty weak or too gimmicky. I think this is safe from the clutches of the garbage tier, just because, again, this would be the only thing that has bullet penetration and that increased walk speed while revved, so it does have unique effects that, I mean, you would have to suffer downsides if you wanted to use, but um, this does have at least some gimmick potential. A new scatter gun, which has on headshot 30% extra damage and then the on hit teammate just uh, basically give him a 30% faster overclock but for the downsides it has a uh, 40% slower deploy speed for or 30% more bullet spread on miss makes you unable to switch weapons for three seconds on miss causes you to bleed for two seconds and on miss makes you unable to reload for two seconds basically hit your shots or you get smited I guess this is just such a stupid weapon I do think because you would be able to be a pretty good support scout okay actually tell you what this would be kind of like the ultimate mvm weapon because being able to like buff your teammates on a hit is really nice scout shouldn't be doing a ton of damage anyway uh, but if he does need to do damage then it basically just is a higher damage scatter gun if you get close to the bots or i guess close enough to like consistently be able to headshot them with the meat shots even with the increased bullet spread so i think in terms of mvm this would probably like become the meta choice for scout if i'm being honest uh but in any other mode, it kind of sucks. So I'll put this in pretty weak or two gimmicky. I think that's appropriate for it. A new scatter gun with bullet penetration, but the downsides of... Wait, what? Increased fall-off damage correction? What the heck does that mean? So does it mean that damage falls off faster? I don't know what fall off damage correction even is. I don't know what that could possibly mean. Um, on hit, <laughs> minus 20% damage if even one bullet missed the enemy. So basically, meat shots do the same. Oh, no, never mind, because then it has another just 20% damage penalty, and then on miss, 15% slower firing speed. Yeah, I'm thinking this is pretty bad, because, like, ideally with bullets passed through enemies, you'd kind of want to be far away for that, um, but then all of the downsides make it almost impossible to use unless you just consistently get meat shots. So I'll put this in garbage. I don't think this would have any real reason to be used over the stock primary. A new flamethrower with an increased random critical hit chance. Oh, God and then 15% damage bonus um, with the downsides of 30% ammo reserves on all of your weapons. Decreased air strafing control bleeds up to 3 HP per second after not receiving healing. On miss makes you unable to switch weapons for 3 seconds and on miss... <sighs> Minus 15 HP. Okay, so this is kind of stacked. Uh, I do think this would kind of be really annoying in pubs. It would be pretty nice with, like, a medic support because then, I mean, the HP penalty would kind of be negated. So with the bleed and what you're left with is a 15% damage increase flamethrower that actually can air blast. So kind of a side grade of the flog. Um... I don't know, I just think for all intents and purposes, this is mostly a downgrade of the flog, but it can air blast, so I guess it has that going for it. I'll put this in gimmicky. I don't think this is quite garbage. Uh, it would have very niche uses. The only use that I could really think that this could feasibly have to be, like, not just a direct downgrade would be if you have a pocket medic in pubs and you wanted to use the, um, I guess either the back burner or the flog, but you also wanted to decent air blasts? I don't know, though. I don't... <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like just the uh, the extra damage would provide a little bit of a reason to use this, so it wouldn't quite be garbage. Alright, let's move on to OP. We'll do OP, and then I guess we'll just do five in the god tier, because those will be the funny ones anyway. A new scatter gun, which causes bleed on hit for five seconds, 20% uh, faster reload speed, and 30% less bullet spread, and then the downsides are that you have 20% less bullets per shot, on shot, wait, mini explosions in your hand. Wait, wait, what is this downside? On shot, mini explosion in your hands, lose 2 HP from bleeding. Okay, there, there's so much ambiguity in this statement, I have no idea what this means. So, first of all, well, let's, let's break this down one at a time. On shot, does that mean if you get hit? I, I can't think of, like, any other potential meaning for that. We'll just say that if you get hit, this, this is when that triggers. And is it 2 HP per second from bleeding or literally just 2 HP? 
where every damage that you take just does two more HP. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is like potentially the dumbest stat that I have ever seen. In terms of how good or bad this would be though, I mean it's basically just the shortstop. Um, it has like more accuracy, uh, faster reload speed, but less bullet spread, but then it also has like increased bleed damage to so basically a five second afterburn, which is really, really good. And um, I, I, I'm just going, <laughs> I'm just gonna ignore the like really stupid downside. I don't even know how to interpret that. It, it looks like, it looks like something that the random generator would create for a stat. Because this is a direct upgrade from the shortstop, I think it's gonna be very strong. It's basically just the shortstop, but with bleed damage, so, I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna be biased and say that it's in very strong. A new soldier boot secondary, which allows you to see the HP of enemies. Overheal can give you 15% more max HP, plus 15% more effective healing for medics, plus 25 max HP, and increased air strafing control. And the downsides are 10% running speed for 10 seconds when feet are not touching the ground. So basically just because you're probably gonna be rocket jumping with this, minus 10% ground speed, and then minus 30% ammo on all weapons. This one's kind of interesting because it has two directions directions that it can be taken. First of all, because you get more healing from medics and more overheal, like my original thought was, oh, this is literally just like the pocket soldier's dream. It encourages you not to rocket jump, uh, it encourages you to stay with the medic, um, and because you can see the HP of enemies, I mean, I guess that helps in competitive, although I'm sure everyone's like tracking damage religiously there anyway, so I'm not sure how much it really would help. And then uh, the decreased ammo on all weapons actually kind of does hurt, because I think that... Let's see, what's 30% of 20, like, 12 or something? Or I guess that, that's what you'd be left with is, like, 12 or 13, so... I mean... It's not too bad. I guess, no, it would be 14, what am I saying? So, it's not too bad. You still have 14 reserve ammo on the rocket launcher, which, I mean, would be okay. Um, the other use that this could have, though, is because you have more max HP and increased air strafing control, um, it would basically allow you to, uh, be like a roamer. It would allow you to have more HP for rocket jumps, especially if you wanted to pair it with something like... I don't know why he would do this, but the Liberty Launcher, um, it would allow you to more, or market garden more effectively. It would be really nice for, like, market gardening, just a pure market garden play style, because the, um, the rocket jumper stats kind of negate the, uh, the two downsides anyway. But this would have a lot of uses. I think this would be kind of one of the, uh, the top choices for a soldier secondary. So I'll put this in very strong, but not broken. I mean, I, I, yeah, th this really would be, uh, one of the best choices for a soldier secondary, but it probably wouldn't overwhelm everything else because it doesn't do like everything so to speak a new melee for the heavy which uh, gives you the 30% faster firing rate to both for four seconds on hit teammate and on a hit the enemy moves slower for four seconds and then on hit you restore 15 HP and then for whatever reason you have decreased air strafing control and no random crits so honestly this one's kind of weird because what it does is kind of useless. I'm not sure when you're gonna be running around as heavy, like with your melee out. Heavy doesn't really have many other support options uh, to allow him to play kind of a support role. And he has the sandwich, but that's like what, just a medium health pack on Will versus like some of the other unique things that the other classes have. So I'm not exactly sure when heavy melee is going to be efficient. Um, at kind of like providing support. The negative stats don't do a ton, but at the same time, not being able to random crit sucks, I feel like, especially on heavy, like, being able to random crit is, like, half the fun with, like, heavy boxing, so... Uh, I'm not I'm not entirely sure what my thoughts are on this. I'm going toward balance, but on fun I mean it wouldn't be just super fun to use uh, slowing down enemies on hit wouldn't be super interesting It, it just like it's kind of a reskin of stock basically it, I, It's unfun in the sense that it's boring. It just doesn't have any interesting stats It's like it, it would pretty much be a side grade to stock which isn't saying much on heavy a new rocket launcher for the soldier Which has 15% increased explosion knockback uh, on a hit the enemy moves 20% slower for three seconds and restore 15 HP on a hit and then um, the projectile always random crits when reflected and then it has a 20% smaller clip size so ironically <laughs> this is a direct upgrade from the black box I'm pretty sure 
is the wait yeah the black box is up to 20 15 20 something like that i still think like even the 5 hp difference that you're getting like returned to you on a hit doesn't really matter compared to the um increased explosion knockback and the 20 uh, percent move speed reduction um this would kind of suck against pyros you'd have to be really sure that you're not like uh shooting right into their air blast but I mean, this is pretty much just a direct upgrade from the black box, which is already a pretty good weapon as it is. So we'll put it in very strong, but not broken. I think that's a pretty fair place for that. All right, let's do four in the God tier. I just want to see how ridiculous these can get because some of the upsides that we've uh, we've seen so far are a little bit crazy to say the least Let, let's just see what fun stuff awaits us um oh my god so uh, this is a rocket launcher with 40 percent faster projectile speed 20 percent larger explosion radius on hit causes enemy to bleed up to five seconds on hit plus 15 hp and 50 percent damage bonus Ooh, lad and the only downsides are 20 percent or wait what am i saying 25 less max hp and 35 percent more damage to self so this wouldn't be as effective for like rocket jumping or whatever, but if you had a pocket medic, this would be insane. Like, holy crap, even if you didn't, because you are still getting like 15% or 15 HP. I need to stop referring to HP as percents, I swear. Uh, but you're getting 15 HP restored to you on a hit, which is the same as the black box or similar at least. 15% uh, damage bonus, 40% projectile speed bonus, and like 20% larger explosion radius, and on hit causing the enemy to bleed. All of the- th this feels like just like some random weapon that I've upgraded in MVM. <laughs> I think the um, the 25 less HP that you would have does provide a significant drawback to using this. Um, although, if you just use this with the... Um, although, no, because you really want the gunboats. Uh, th the downsides do provide a significant drawback. I already said that, but like the, the downsides do kind of suck. They prevent this from being just strictly overpowered because you kind of become a glass cannon, but... Holy crap, you are a very effective glass cannon at that. I think if you had a medic on your team, this would be overpowered, but if you didn't, it would just be in very strong, so I'm not really sure how to rate that. We'll just put it in OP as frick, because this the tier is freaking lonely up there. This isn't supposed to be a super serious tier list anyway, so um, that that's just... We'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll include some arbitrary stuff like that. A new secondary... <laughs> Oh my god, this is just a field of blue. Um, okay, let's just see what this does, because it looks like there's a lot of useless stuff on here. Ironically, <laughs> all of the stats on here are kind of useless. I think being able to see the HP of enemies would be kind of nice as Sniper, because you'd know basically whether to go for a headshot or body shot. Other than that, though, most of the stuff on here is kind of useless. It's basically the uh, the cozy camper, except it doesn't give you the flinch resistance. And um, the downside doesn't really mean much either. It just is like you're, you're getting healed less from medics, which, like, okay, unless you're using the uh, the vaccinator with the, uh, the sniper and doing that kind of meme play style. You're not really in a ton of danger of needing the heals. <laughs> this is like... I don't even know what to think about this. I didn't even know it was possible to generate this many useless stats at a time. I'll put this in balance, but on fun, it's just such a boring weapon. I don't even know what to say about it. A new melee for the spy, which is uh, on hit plus 15 HP, uh, causes bleed, the enemy moves 20% slower, and then the, I guess those are all on hit. You also are slightly faster and taunting removes debuff, which, yeah, ouch, that's like a really long taunt. Honestly, at that point, just suffer the debuffs. And then on miss, you have a 15% slower firing speed for a bit, and you can't switch weapons for a bit, so, I mean, okay, um, <laughs> again, this is just boring, like, here, here's the thing about all the on hit stuff, the only one that matters is plus 15 HP because the other two just should you you should go for backstabs okay that that's that's kind of the like point of the knife and on miss it just kind of sucks <laughs> so this is just like a low tier kunai because you get HP but you don't sacrifice any to begin with I'll put this in balance but on fun again it's just again <laughs> Just just a stupid weapon. Honestly, honest to God, these are getting, getting infuriating to talk about. A new secondary for the soldier, which just has a frick ton of stuff. Like, holy crap. Um, Looking through the stuff here, I'm not going to read all these out. Looking through this, 
I mean, this is pretty much the same as the other boots that we saw. Um, the only, like, downside that it has, though, is 30% less ammo, which I think is kind of fair. Um, but basically, like, increased move speed and max HP and kind of jump height. I feel like that doesn't matter as much as of rocket jumping. But uh, move speed, extra HP, and uh, effective healing means that this is just a really insane pocket medic weapon. Um, I feel like we kind of already got this in the form of the last one. Um, th this is almost identical to what we generated before, actually. Wait, what? So, it gets to keep the other one company. I, again, these, these are just getting so ridiculous. And I'll just generate another god one as number 20, because these have all sucked so far. Uh, this is a cleaver for scout that allows you to regenerate HP gains on hit plus 15 HP. On hit makes the enemy move 20% slower and does the overclock thing, the teammates, and in exchange it gives you a 40% slower recharge rate. I mean, that's this is an interesting one, I guess. Um, it kind of does a little bit of everything, but nothing in particular. Um, Oh, and it sets them on fire. I forgot to read the uh, the other text. So, yeah, uh, dealing damage and setting them on fire is actually kind of cool. This would be an interesting one because of that. And uh, honestly, it would be a pretty good side grade to the cleaver uh, because it would reduce move speed and inflict afterburn, which is kind of worse than bleed. But it heals you and um, it gives you a little bit of regen uh, in exchange for not being able to throw it. Actually... Yeah, I think the cleaver has a faster, like a notably faster recharge time. So this is like, uh, you get to throw one of these for every three cleavers. So I think that actually kind of balances out a bit. So I'll put this in balanced. It's just kind of an interesting one. I, I was kind of hoping that we'd get more OP as Frick ones, but... You know, sometimes it'd be that way. So anyway, that is the Generator by Cultured Shrimp. Uh, you can go to this one by... Wait, what's the website? It is uh, this link right here. I'll put it in the description too, so you can check this out if you want. This one, I, honestly, this one's a lot more fun to play around with uh, than the other ones that have been done so far. Because, again, you can kind of like select your class and your slot, which means you can get exactly what you want. Maybe not exactly, but you can get it closer to what you want in fewer tries. In terms of which one I'm going to use for my designing weapons videos, because I was going to start one of those before this came out and didn't get a chance, I'm probably going to stick with Acer's Generator. I think this one is kind of cool, but it has a lot of kinks that I think would need to be worked out before I can, like, say, like, oh yeah, this is just, like, the end-all, be-all generator. I'm still working on my own weapon generator in Python, so don't worry, I'll, I'll make a video when that comes out. It'll probably be, uh, progress is stalled a little bit because I've not had time, so I'll, I'll um, I'll keep working on it as I, uh, go back to school here, but, uh, I'll make a video on that. I, I'm still excited to kind of make my own. I, I hope that mine will be the end-all, be-all as the, like, weapon generator guy i need to be the weapon generator guy which means owning the weapon generator it's just how it is i have a big name to live up to i'm sorry but yeah thank you for watching and as always uh, i will make another one of these videos every time a new generator comes out um i look forward to seeing what people make and um at some point too i'll do a comparison video just comparing all of the generators that we have so far uh, and just kind of seeing like you know how good actually are these I i've kind of started to like collect samples sizes from the other ones anyway so um it's kind of neat but anyway thank you guys for watching uh check out cultured shrimps generator in the description and most importantly have a good one